This is News Today with WDW News Today. I'm Tom Corliss of WDWNT.com. Please like this video, subscribe, and hit the notifications bell to make sure you never hit the, never miss the latest from the Disney theme parks all around the world. You think I know this by now, how many times I've read this. But either way, here now the news for October 18th, 2023. TikTok user Jen in Florida uh, shared a video of a Magic Kingdom guest running alongside the stopped Buzz Lightyear Space Ranger spin ride and then being escorted away by a cast member. In the first part of the video, the guest is seen running on the platform next to the ride vehicles, to having apparently jumped out of his own uh, from the biggest room full of aliens to the room where guests first pass Zerg's ship. The video then cuts to a clip of a cast member walking along the platform in the same area, escorting the guests behind him. In the room near Zerg's ship, the guest stops at a vehicle with a child in it, retrieves presumably his own bag, and then leaves. Jan also added the song Bad Boys, by Inner Circle in the background of the video and wrote, apparently they don't like it when you hop out and enter the set. You can watch the video for yourself on our website. As many comments have pointed out, this is uh, grounds to not just be removed from the park, but to be potentially trespassed or banned from Walt Disney World, climbing out of a moving ride vehicle without permission and assistance from a cast member, or even if it's not moving, is not only against the rules, but highly dangerous, again, even if the vehicle is stopped. A new passion fruit mochi treat is available at Energy Bites, the Tron Light Cycle Run snack stand in the Magic Kingdom. It's located in the courtyard uh, just before you enter the Tron Light Cycle Run area. The passion fruit isoform, as they call it, is $5.79. It's ice cream mochi with citrus, shortbread crunch, and purple ube foam. You can read the review at WDWNT.com. Staying in the area, the light-up circuit-inspired walls of the Tron Light Cycle Run queue at the Magic Kingdom have been now made solid black. That's right, they're off. The walls were around guests immediately upon entering the show building after passing the giant digitizer that transports you into the grid and before reaching the pre-show area. The lines of circuits on the wall would pulse and flash in blue light as guests were digitized. Uh, the photos you're looking at now are what the walls used to look like. Now you're looking at what they are now. They are now... Uh, solid, unthemed, non-light-up black walls illuminated by standard overhead lighting. Uh, we asked a cast member, they told us the crews were working on the light-up walls in both the standard and the lightning lane sides of the queue to fix them, and they will return at some point. However, there's no time frame as to when that will happen. How hard is it to maintain blue lights in walls? This company created robots, right? Like, people are fixing robots in this park. We are having trouble... Maintaining these blue light-up walls, it's, it's so bizarre. So bizarre that these broke and are just left like this now. It's weird. Speaking of things that are broken, King Triton has gone missing from the Magic Kingdom. The statue of Ariel's father could usually be found across from Under the Sea Journey of the Little Mermaid next to the Disney Vacation Club kiosk. This summer, they, we've been cataloging the dirty state of the statue. It's been pretty beat up uh, until it was unexpectedly removed this week. We first noticed the unfortunate state of the statue way back in July, when you're looking at these photos now from July. His left hand was what caught our attention. The paint was cracked, peeling, and caked in dirt and grime. When we visited the Magic Kingdom on October 17th, we saw the king was no longer presiding over his subjects or, uh, I guess, merely those waiting in line for a pretzel. Hopefully, this means Triton is getting the complete cleaning and repaint he deserves. Uh, we guess there's only just only one problem, how much we're going to miss him. You know, kudos to whichever writer on our staff put that in there. It's very good. This program is brought to you by our official travel agent sponsor, Be Our Guest Vacations. Your dream vacation begins with Be Our Guests and their concierge team of expert vacation planners. Head on over to BeOurGuestVacations.com slash WDWNT. Their team will design your next magical vacation from the Walt Disney World and Disneyland Resorts to the Disney Cruise Line to Adventures by Disney and more. They're also able to book unforgettable VIP tours where you and your group can experience the ultimate park day. The best part is their concierge services are 100% free, so book today. To celebrate the opening of Epcot's newest attraction, the Journey of Water inspired by Moana, Spaceship Earth is lighting up in the evening with a special Moana-themed display. The display first made its official debut on the opening day of the attraction, but it happened on the second night uh, without music for some reason. First night it had audio, second night it did not. Who knows what night three will bring, but nonetheless, uh, the lights are set to You're Welcome, which is sung uh, by Maui from the film, and one of the light displays is of Maui's own fish hook. In another section, Spaceship Earth appears to look ablaze with fire-themed lighting. 
The, light, uh, the lights also form an image of a sun with long spanning beams swirling out. And of course, it wouldn't be a Moana light show without some representation of the heart of Te Fiti, which appears in lights. And you can see Te Fiti up close, of course, in Journey of Water. It's unclear how long they'll be keeping this light display. Of course, you remember the Epcot 41 stayed for a long time. Um, the festival ones obviously last the length of a festival. Uh, but the question would be, how long is this one going to stay? We don't know, so we would suggest going sooner rather than later. It could already be over. Um, we have no idea. But I, I tend to think it's going to stay for at least a little bit. I would think maybe at least till the holiday season, but uh, we'll have to wait and see. Disney has offered a glimpse at some of the exclusive offerings that guests attending the upcoming Disney Jollywood Nights party at Hollywood Studios will have the opportunity to experience. Disney Live Entertainment creative director Tom Vazana uh, showcased the festive costumes that Mickey and his friends will wear at the party during an October 16th appearance on Good Morning America. He also previewed some of the previously announced dining and entertainment options that will be offered during Disney Jollywood Nights. Vazana stated that the costumes will be one of a kind for Disney Jollywood Nights. Costumes combine the holiday spirit with the glitz and glamour of early 20th century Hollywood, matching the aesthetic that Jollywood Nights is attempting to achieve. Mickey wears a yellow striped boater hat uh, that has his ears and the hat's vivid teal hue replicated on his overshirt. Mickey also dons an orange t-shirt, white pants, and pink shoes. Minnie wears a pink and green dress with yellow buttons and a white and white detailing, and her outfit is completed with a festive bow attached to her right ear. Goofy and Donald each wear green sweaters. Goofy completes his outfit with orange pants and a red, white, and green scarf and a green Santa hat, while Donald rounds out his outfit with primarily a red scarf with green detailing and a pastel orange Santa hat. Daisy wears a pink sweater with a teal bow, while Pluto dons red reindeer ears and a festive collar with a starlight peppermint candy ornament. Vazana also announced that, the, that several retro characters, including Max, dressed as Paraline Chippendale in their Rescue Rangers garb, and Phineas and Ferb will appear around Echo Lake. This was announced. Also, it's weird that he's announcing this as if they're retro. Tom, they were in this park several weeks ago. You could meet these characters. Um, you then took them away, and now they're part of this party. Can we not pretend magically that these are new? Um, it's just, just weird. To Vazana's credit, Phineas and Ferb, though, that one has been gone for a while. Uh, also not brought up in the course of that uh, piece was that Edna Mode will also be, be appearing alongside another character from The Incredibles at Pixar Place during the party. Vazano also previewed the two exclusive stage shows that will be a part of the event. At Theater of the Stars, the incomparable Miss Piggy and Kermit the Frog are part of the action with Tiana and Belle. The Hyperion Theater has a whole new show, all dedicated to Tim Burton's Nightmare Before Christmas, is what they spoke about. Uh, Tom Vazana, uh, the first piece he showed uh, during the spot, uh, features Miss Piggy and Kermit the Frog waving from a wreath as Tiana and Belle appear below them, alongside a band at the theater. But the next piece of art was new and places the beloved Muppets behind a stack of holiday presents in the middle of the stage. Holiday lights and decorations adorn several areas of the stage as performers dance and sing on either side of Miss Piggy and Kermit. And again, Vazana briefly touched on that Nightmare Before Christmas inspired show that'll be at the Hyperion Theater. Uh, the sing-along was initially announced in June, but no further details have been provided. Uh, they also talked about the previously announced Speakeasy sing-along at the Hollywood Brown Derby restaurant and a tip-top club-inspired soiree outside the Twilight Zone Tower of Terror. Other exclusive offerings that weren't mentioned include the return of the Jingle Bell Jingle Bam nighttime spectacular and holiday-themed magic shots that'll be offered through Disney Photo Pass. But of course, we have to talk about food, and Walt Disney World has released a full guide to the food and beverage items that will be available at Jollywood Nights at Hollywood Studios, and it is a very, very long list of food that I will not read on the show. I'm sure many of you will be happy that I'm not going to do that today, but guests can enjoy the holiday fiesta in La Cale on Commissary Lane, featuring food inspired by Latin holiday traditions. There's jazzy holidays at the Hollywood Brown Derby, as it transforms the restaurant into a smooth jazz club with craft cocktails and a menu of light bites. The Twilight Soiree at the Tip Top Club is a party in the courtyard of the Hollywood Tower Hotel, featuring cocktails and a live band. Finally get my Tower of Terror bar. And special food and beverage items will be available at Fairfax Fair, Pizza Rizzo, Dockside Diner, and more. Personally, you all know, you all know how I make a living. <laughs> uh, you all know what I'm excited for. This cookie. They are making Santa Gertie cookies. 
Um, this is the most perfect thing. I'm very, very excited. The thing I'm sad about is it, it's so much food and beverage. There's only 10 of these, and I, you assume most people would only be going to one, and you got to really narrow it down and figure out what you want to eat. And on top of that, there's a number of shows to see. There's a lot, it's like the Magic Kingdom parties. There's a lot of time management you have to make. Um, and I know if you're like me, you probably want to try and see everything at this. So trying to see everything, going to get snacks, going to get certain food items, it's, it's going to be a bit daunting. If you're not going to the first party, though, I, I will tell you, we have a whole, I think there's like 10 of us going to the first Jollywood Nights to cover it here from WWNT. So stay tuned. Hopefully the 10 of us will be able to cover each and every food item every piece of entertainment, all the meet and greets, everything on night one, so that way we can help you plan uh, your Jollywood nights. So stay tuned for all of that. Disney's new Once Upon a Studio short film references the defunct Magic of Disney animation attraction that was previously known at the Disney MGM Studios. When Hollywood Studios first opened as the Disney MGM Studios back in 1989, it was a production studio as well as a theme park. The original version of the magic of Disney animation was a full behind-the-scenes look at the process of animating a feature film and began with the short film Back to Neverland, which starred Walter Cronkite and Robin Williams. In Back to Neverland, Williams portrayed a Disney's Hollywood Studios guest plucked from the crowd by Cronkite. This was three years prior to the release of Aladdin starring Robin Williams as the genie. And genie's tourist outfit at the end of the animated film is actually a reference to Williams' costume in Back to Neverland. Either way, Cronkite asked Williams about his favorite Disney film, and Williams said it was Peter Pan. And this was also before Williams portrayed an adult Peter in Hook, by the way. Cronkite declared that Williams would be turned into an animated character, and the two were transported uh, to a magical storybook land by Tinkerbell, where Cronkite showed Williams a storyboard for the animated Back to Neverland film they would be creating. Uh, they then appeared in a sound studio where Williams recorded lines becoming just a voice. And an animator then brought Williams' unique Lost Boy character to life through sketches. And the character was a small boy in a yellow animal suit with pointed ears and a skinny tail. The Lost Boy was then transferred to cells, colored, placed in backgrounds, etc., until the animated film was completed. That's how they used to make animation, folks, before computers, you know, anyway. Um, after watching Back to Neverland, guests would get to walk through the actual animation studio at the park where they could watch animators work from an elevated walkway behind glass windows. So why is this all in the news? Well, for Once Upon a Studio, which honors the 100th anniversary of the Walt Disney Company, if you haven't watched it yet, highly recommend it. I think it's the best thing they've done for the whole celebration. But Disney actually brought back William's Lost Boy character for a brief cameo. He could be seen flying past a window and looking in at Olaf and an animator's desk, just as guests would do with animators at the Magic of Disney Animation at the studios. The Lost Boy cameo comes seconds before Olaf's sketch comes to life as the genie from Aladdin. Again, also fitting because that those are both Robin's characters, right? The Lost Boy and the genie. Um, this short was amazing. Uh, even without this reference, this was an incredible thing. But if you're, you know, a theme park nerd like me, and you probably are if you're watching this, this was one of the most thoughtful, uh, one of the most thoughtful and, and fantastic references. It's very cute. And I, not only, you see the character first pop up, and I was like, that's incredible. And then he flies past the glass looking in. It's like clearly a reference to the Florida Animation Studio, which obviously is a big part of, uh, the legacy of Walt Disney feature animation, for sure, was a big part of that for many, many years. So something to look for when you watch the short, if you haven't yet, or go back and watch it again. Why not, right? It's so great. Pocahontas, Miko, and Goofy have moved to new locations for meet and greets at Disney's Animal Kingdom. Pocahontas and Miko are now appearing in the Oasis section, while Goofy has joined Donald's Dino Bash once again in Dino Land USA. Miko is appearing next to Garden Gate Gifts, where Divine also appears in the mornings. Pocahontas is near the Bridge to Discovery Island in front of the rocks on the east side of the Oasis. Goofy is meeting next to Triceratops Spin in front of Donald's Dino Bash backdrop. Um, you may remember he used to meet in this costume over by Primeval World, but that's been demolished, so he had to go somewhere else now. Uh, of course, Primeval World closed forever um, after the COVID reopening. They officially ended it, and then they bulldozed it, and that's why... Uh, Goofy's previous spot is gone. He's been appearing in, on the flotillas in the meantime, but those are um, those have still been going on. The, the word on the street is those are supposed to end, and this is supposed to be the character supposed to just go back to their meet and greets only. But that didn't happen when we checked, so we'll let you know as uh, this develops. But the, the idea I think is that they're going to go back to just meet and greets in this park. 
It looks like Disney's Blizzard Beach Water Park will be open for the winter holidays, while Disney's Typhoon Lagoon Water Park will close for the season. The two water parks have not operated simultaneously since the COVID-19 pandemic hit in 2020, and it doesn't seem like they will anytime soon. Currently, Typhoon Lagoon is open, but the Walt Disney World website doesn't list any operating hours uh, for the park past November 4th, even though the calendar goes into April of 2024. Blizzard Beach doesn't have any upcoming hours listed either, but it's possible to reopen on November 5th as Typhoon Lagoon closes. The Walt Disney World website also lists Blizzard Beach under its holiday offerings, confirming the park is scheduled to reopen soon. At Blizzard Beach, guests can expect daily snow, quote unquote, snowfall and appearances by Santa Claus, in addition to the park's general winter wonderland theming. Blizzard Beach was last open from November of 2022 to March of 2023, although it had to close several times in December and January due to cold weather at that time of year. Typhoon Lagoon reopened in March of this year and has been operating since. Walt Disney World annual pass holders can get a head start on holiday shopping as a new VI pass holder perk is now available that offers a limited time discount on Shop Disney. Pass holders can find the perfect gift for everyone on their list and save 25% off on regularly priced merchandise online at shopdisney.com. Some exclusions do apply, though. The deal runs uh, from, it started on October 17th. It will run through October 29th. That's a Sunday. To redeem the discount, guests simply have to log into their Disney account and verify that their Walt Disney World annual pass is linked to that account. You can confirm this by going to the Memberships and Passes tab. And after that, guests can sign into Shop Disney with their Disney account login and enter the promotion code WDW25. The discount will be applied to all eligible items in the bag. A version of the Mickey and Friends Halloween Cavalcade returned to Disneyland Park this week in celebration of the spooky season. Cast members said they expect the cavalcade to run daily at 1.45 and 2.45 p.m. through Halloween. You can watch our full video of the cavalcade right here on our YouTube channel. Work continues in the downtown Disney district at Disneyland Resort as the entire area is being reimagined. We visited the district recently to check on the latest construction updates. A swirling spire has been added along with other roofing elements to this rounded structure next to what will presumably be Din Tai Fung. In our August update, this structure had only just begun to take shape, but now the white dual spire element has been added along with wooded, uh, wooden railings along the edge of the roof. This spire looks similar to the one featured in the concept art for the second story bar that will be part of the recently announced Parkside Market. In the art, this area is used for, as a stage for live music. And while these could potentially be separate locations, it's possible they could share a similar architectural design. A similar structure is also featured in the original concept art for the reimagining of Downtown Disney. You can see it right here. Uh, directly next to the Spire structure, what is likely the upcoming restaurant Din Tai Fung, has been uh, begun building out its Chinese-style hipped roof. The restaurant was originally announced for the Downtown Disney District last year. Metal roofing has been uh, set alongside the main portion of the roof. And the edge of the roof has, and its points are still exposed beams for now at least. The Downtown Disney District reimagining is inspired by the mid-century Space Age look, which was popular in California during the 50s and 60s when Disneyland first opened. The project has been ongoing for the last few years. However, Disneyland Resort uh, President Ken Patrick announced that an 18-month completion window was happening, uh, which sees that all this should be done by the end of 2024. Magic Band Plus will be available for Disney Dream Sailings that begin on November 20th, 2023 or later. On Disney Cruise Line, the service is called Disney Band Plus, and it has already launched on The Wish and The Fantasy and will be available on the Disney Magic Sailings beginning next week. Guests can place a Disney Band Plus order between 45 and 11 days prior to sailing. Their reservation must be paid in full before they're able to purchase. Disney Band Plus operates just like any Magic Band Plus or Key to the World card. Key to the World cards are still being issued and are still required, along with a photo ID for guests 18 and up at Ports of Call. Uh, Disney Band Plus can be used to board the ship at U.S. ports, access staterooms, charge food and merchandise, and link vacation photos. And kids can use Disney Band Plus to access the Oceaneer Club on board and Scuttles Cove on Castaway Key. They're waterproof, rechargeable, and interact with fireworks shows as well. There are exclusive Disney Cruise Line band designs, but guests can also use a Magic Band Plus from the Walt Disney World or Disneyland Resorts as well. The solid bands cost $34.99. The theme designs cost $44.99 plus tax. Shipping is included, and orders are expected to arrive approximately 10 business days after ordering. There will also be a limited selection of bands available for purchase on board while supplies last, and guests cannot return or exchange a band. The overhaul of Studio One at Walt Disney Studios Park in Paris has begun. 
We visited the park earlier this month and saw the construction walls had gone up outside of the back of the building. Construction walls have gone up outside what you may call the exit of Studio One with crews starting outside first. This marks the start of phase zero in the update plan, which originally was slated to begin in November of 2023. Work will reportedly continue here through April of 2024, but after that is when they will begin work on the interior of Studio One. It will close for a year starting on April 5th, 2024 and reopen supposedly on April 25th, 2025. Studio One is a building that acts as the park's main street. Disneyland Paris filed a permit in March for construction at the enclosed indoor space. Inside the entrance and its surrounding theater district is Restaurant en Coulisse, uh, which is currently themed to a backstage catered meal area on a movie set. With the overhaul, the theming will reportedly be updated to instead take guests to a movie premiere garden party. The entrance into the park through Studio One will also get an update in the form of a new awning and a uh, look that resembles a cinema. Here you can see the Toon Studio sign is behind the tan construction walls outside. Also, the partner statue is back there as well, along with various planters and walkways. Work on this entire area is scheduled to be completed again in May of 2025, alongside the rest of the park's currently announced updates and expansions, which includes the Frozen-inspired Kingdom of Arendelle. You know, Studio One, obviously, this it is the worst Disney park ever built. There's no argument in that. I don't think Studio One is the culprit. I don't think it's that bad. It's not amazing inside, um, but I don't know that I'm happy with what they're changing either. I don't know if it's going to feel lopsided with less facades in there, if you're taking the, all the facades away from the right side of the street, but the left ones are staying. Like, how does that work? I don't know. Well, I, I'll wait and see, but, um, you know, I just, uh, I, I hope the Walt Disney Company, you know, Paris has been very successful the last several months and years now. I really hope they're going to dial up this expansion. I don't know that fixing up Studio One a little bit and this one land out on this lake are going to fix the way people feel about this park. Um, I, I certainly hope there's more to come. For the absolute latest on these stories and all that didn't make it into today's show, be sure to check WDWNT.com and follow us on all your favorite social media platforms. You can support the entire team behind this show and others by joining the WDWNT Interglobe Society at patreon.com slash WDWNT. Get access to exclusive content, early access to the WDWNT podcast, which you could watch episode four on this channel right now, where we talk about Disney Parks myths. And there might be some that you believe that we find out aren't true. I would definitely give it a watch. Uh, you get uh, early access to event tickets and more. A special shout out to all of our WIGS members watching who make this show happen every week. For the worldwide leader in Disney Parks news, this is Tom Corliss saying, enjoy the rest of your today and have a great big beautiful tomorrow. WDW News Tonight is our weekly comedy show combining the news of the week, comedy segments, thoughtful discussions, insane characters, parody commercials, games, and more. Watch live on Thursdays at 9 p.m. and become a Wigs member to get access to a bonus post show. Watch WDW News Tonight episodes anytime and live on YouTube or get the audio-only version on iTunes and other podcast services.